Great, thanks for the introduction. Um, my name is Michael. I'm a college administration reporter for the Harvard Crimson. I'll be talking a little bit about the coverage that we've done around uh, Harvard's largest Christian fellowship group, uh, Harvard College Faith in Action, or abbreviated HCFA. Um, so the story that we've reported, the main storyline, is that HCFA, this organization, actually removed a uh, student leader from their organization after it was revealed that she was in a same-sex relationship. Um, she identified as a bisexual woman, and she had entered a same-sex relationship over the summer of her, between her freshman and sophomore years, and her sophomore fall, the organization asked her to step down from her uh, leadership position due to her um, sexual identity and due to her decision to date a female um, during the summer. So uh, the coverage that we did was a very sensitive story. Looking back in retrospect, it didn't take, the time span wasn't too long, but it felt like a long time and a lot of work went into reporting the story. Um, just to go through and detail a little bit of the story behind getting this story and also the process that we went through. Um, so really, the first thing that brought this organization to the forefront of campus debate and campus discussion was um, their invitation of Jackie Hill Perry, an ex-gay um, poetry artist, um, to campus to talk at one of their worship sessions. Um, this brought um, HCFA and Christian relationship with um, the BGLTQ community to the forefront of campus dialogue. Um, so this was around Friday, February 16th. On the Thursday before that, we had heard from someone who was part of HCFA that this situation had happened where HCFA has a policy of not letting BGLTQ members on its student leadership board. Um, this is something that we thought was very interesting, but we wanted to make sure to get all the facts. Um, this was a very large and very um, sort of impactful claim that we wanted to make sure that we were getting all the facts for and investigating correctly. Um, so starting that Thursday, we began reaching out and meeting with several people of the HCFA community, um, pe meeting with people off the record, other student leaders talking on background, just making sure to get a sense of what the community felt about this issue, whether this was something that was prominently discussed in the community, or whether this thing was less well known and more of an internal executive board type decision. Um, over that weekend, we actually had identified who the student leader was that was asked to step down, and we had found out that she was willing to talk to the talk to us um, on background. She didn't want her name named due to family issues. She wasn't actually out to her family yet, so she didn't want um, her family to know that this was a situation that was going on. But she was happy to talk about it on campus. Most people on campus knew who she was and um, what her situation was. So I actually spoke to her on Monday, and when we spoke to her, we made sure to get all the be sensitive for one, and also get all the confirmation and information from her. So we were able to hear her side of the story. Um, we were able to corroborate a lot of what we heard from the tip. And we also asked specifically for documents, including emails, text messages, um, pamphlets maybe that the organization had handed out. So we had obtained all these documents to kind of corroborate the full story of what this organization's attitude towards the BGLTQ community was on campus and what their beliefs were. Um, so throughout that time, we actually had found out that um, their policy was less so of not allowing BGLTQ members on their board, but more so of not allowing BGLTQ members who are dating or in same-sex relationships on their board. So they have had previous BGLTQ members on their board who were not in active same-sex relationships at the time, um, who were actually allowed to serve in the, in the board capacity or leadership capacity on the organization. So these sorts of clarifications we were able to get through these text messages, emails. Uh, we reached out to a lot of her friends and people who knew her to get further confirmation that her story was able to be corroborated, um, made sure that the only, only things that we put in the story were actually events that we had been able to corroborate with multiple sources. So uh, I believe somewhere we spoke to over 12 current and former members of HCFA, so we had a broad range of uh, viewpoints. There's a lot of stakeholders in this story, um, not just the Christian community, but also the, um, the college administration. Um, a lot was going on, a lot of people had a stake, especially given that this was uh, the largest Christian fellowship on campus. Um, on Tuesday, we began reaching out to administration for a comment. So as the administration at Harvard has a policy of not, a non-discrimination policy for student organizations, so this was obviously in somewhat of a violation of their policy. So we reached out to administration to comment whether they had known about this, whether they had been investigating. We had heard from the person who was asked to step down that she had brought this to the attention of the administration back in December, I believe. and. Um, we hadn't seen any action from the administration, so we wanted to make sure that they were accountable on that front as well and give them a chance to comment. Um, but actually, when we reached out on Tuesday, they responded saying that they were, they had decided somehow that day that they would put 
HCFA on probation. So they sort of jumped the gun. Um, they put the group on probation. During that day, we came back to the newsroom, um, had to change the lead of the story. So eventually, we started out reporting just on this situation, um, but we ended up reporting on sort of the college's action to place this organization on probation. Um, and that night, we spent a lot of time just sourcing more people, talking to her friends. We actually were able to speak to her girlfriend. We ended up getting an email that um, the, the leader, the adult leadership of HCFA had sent out to the students that this uh, woman was leading. And it was sort of her quote unquote resignation letter um, actually directly attributing her uh, sexual identity and her decision to date a woman to the reason more or less to the reason that she was asked to step down. So we had gotten sort of the smoking gun document that allowed us to confirm many of the situations or many of the stories that we had heard throughout the weekend and throughout the few days. Um, so after that, we were able to start writing the story and really documenting everything that went down. Uh, we made sure only to include the things that were really corroborated by several people and through the documents and um, made sure to be sensitive in respecting everyone's viewpoint and making sure everyone's perspective was included. Um, to get the full picture of the story. We ended up actually speaking to the current leadership of HCFA, so uh, Scott Ely and Molly Richmond, the two current co-presidents. Um, I ended up speaking to them on background a lot and off the record, and also they gave us a public statement. So um, a lot of discussion on that front as well to make sure that they were comfortable and we were comfortable in reporting the full true facts of the story. Um, there's not too many, I guess, key takeaways. This is a pretty standard process. Just going through making sure to be sensitive throughout uh, the reporting and making sure that we cover everyone and make sure all stakeholders are involved um, without just reaching to one viewpoint and maybe messing up some of the facts that are inaccurate. Um, I guess just making sure to understand all sides of the story is the big thing. Um, approaching this sensitive story, obviously with a lot of caution and care. And then um, I think the one big thing was finding solid evidence, so really pushing to find documents, emails, text messages that really corroborate someone's uh, story that they present to you vocally. Um, that adds a lot to the story and is able to kind of bring the facts and your evidence to the next level. Um, I think that's about time, but if I have any questions later on, I'm glad to answer. Thanks for having me.